This last project in this series of tutorials on various jQuery UI interfaces is a drag and drop interface, which allows the user to drag items from one box to any of a number of other boxes. Like this, we have coloured boxes divs representing real boxes, and we have a list of names of children's toys, and we can drag the toys from any box to any other box. And if we refresh the page, the new positions for these toys are maintained because the database has, as always, been updated in the background using an Ajax call. We're using a table in our database named Toys, which contains the names of a number of these children's toys and the names of colours representing the boxes that we can put the toys in. And we have an auto incrementing ID number, as usual, to distinguish the various records. The box field has data type enum allowing just the values orange, blue, green or red. First in drag and drop PHP, we link to a new JavaScript file called drag and drop.js in the scripts folder. Then I've used a for each loop to loop through the four color names stored in an array named all the colors to echo out these four divs. All four divs share the class name box and they're distinguished by the ID name of their colour. Looking at the HTML source, you'll see that inside each of these box divs is an inner div which contains the toy name, and these inner divs are identified by their ID number, by the ID number of that toy, from the database. The boxes are styled in style.css with a border of the appropriate colour and they're positioned on the screen using position absolute. In each div, we use a new method named box, working on the object dollar display, and we pass the color name to this method as a parameter. In classes.php, we get the color name as the parameter, execute a prepared statement, and output the div, its ID number, and the matching toy name. So that's all we need, and now we'll write drag and drop.js. We want the divs inside the boxes to be draggable. So we select these divs in jQuery with a descendant selector dot box div. So that's div inside um, the element with the class name box. And we make all of these draggable. Now we can drag the toy names around anywhere, but they stay wherever we drop them. We solved this earlier on in the course. Can you remember what we did to prevent this? We used helper clone in the draggable clause. Refresh, and that solves that. Now on to our droppable areas, which receive the items dragged. We want all the four boxes to be able to receive items. So we'll use dot box, the class name, as the selector and make that droppable. Then we want a function to fire when a drop action occurs. So we have this kicking in on the option drop. This time we need to get three variables from the HTML. The ID number which identifies the item dragged, the name of the toy being dragged, and the ID name of the box receiving the dragged item. This is the new color name that we're going to assign to the item dragged. We get the ID of the item dragged in the same way as we did earlier, getting the ID attribute of ui.draggable. And assigning this to a variable ID. The name of the toy being dragged is found in a very similar way. Can you do this before I give you the answer? We get this by using the HTML attribute of the element. The receiving box can be selected using dollar this. That refers to the current selector, the parent selector of the, the function that we're working in and its ID is the colour name that we need. 
Now we can do the AJAX call. The URL of the PHP file to call is ajax forward slash drag and drop dot ajax dot php. The type is get again and the data to send is the ID number and the name of the receiving box. That's a mistake, that shouldn't be a semicolon, that obviously should be a comma there. I've already written the PHP file to call as it's so similar to those that we've done before. We pass the variables using get and execute a prepared statement to update the database, exactly as before. Now in our HTML, we need to remove the toy name from the original box and add it to the new one. We'll do this the moment the AJAX call has successfully completed using a success clause. Removing the current ui.draggable item from the page and appending it to inside the box it's dragged to. For this we need the box name, concatenate it to a hash symbol so as to make the ID selector for that box. And to this we append the inner div that we need with the ID number as its ID and then inside that div the name of the toy. Refresh the page and try that. And something's gone wrong. We're, we're getting an undefined. Something's gone wrong in the script. Let's go and see what's wrong. Ah, I can actually see what's wrong. Have a look and see if you can spot the mistake before I correct it. Here's the problem. It shouldn't be attribute HTML. It should be just HTML. Uh, it should be just dot HTML and then brackets. Go back and refresh the page, and it's better, but we'll find that if we try and drag an item that we've just dragged to a box, we can't select it. We're running again into the problem of items newly added to the DOM not being active yet for jQuery. This is easily solved with helper clone again. We need to select the draggable div with the current ID, that's the one that we've just dragged. And to this we add helper clone. Refresh and drag an item, and then try and drag the same item again to another box, and it works, and that problem's solved. The sensitivity of the drop action is controlled using the option tolerance. This can have one of four values, fit, intersect, pointer or touch. We'll try all of them. Fit means the draggable element must overlap the droppable entirely, or it will not be accepted. So that won't work. That's not far enough. That won't work. Only that works once it's fully in the box. With intersect, the draggable element must overlap the droppable by at least 50%. So here we go again. That's not enough. Even that's not enough. Now it's more than 50% and that goes in. With pointer, just the mouse pointer has to overlap the droppable area. So the pointers outside won't go in. Still the pointers outside and it won't go in. Put the pointer further to the left and it goes in. This can be a bit odd because I can put the pointer a long way to the right and it's selecting the div and then it goes in even though we haven't actually appeared to drag on the words. And with touch the draggable element will be accepted if any part of it at all overlaps the droppable. So this is touch in action and you can see that the items drop in much easier. I'll leave it at touch for this project. As a final refinement we could make the receiving box expand to fit if a lot of toys are placed in it. We use the CSS min height auto to do this. 
That's the last of these tutorials on jQuery UI interfaces. You can try out the live demos of all of them using the links in the lesson texts, and you can download the zip file containing the code from webinaction.co.uk.